Amen. Thank you so much, media. And I was kind of debating how I was, how I was going to start my sermon. And when you started playing I Surrender All, it kind of galvanized a thought I had. I read in Ellen White this morning a very interesting quotation. She says, unless you are broken, you are worthless. You know, usually when you have something valuable and it gets broken, what does it make it? More, wor more worthless or less worthless? Less. If I have something valuable and it breaks, it loses its value. But in the kingdom of heaven, things, as someone uh, one time wrote, it's the upside down kingdom. In the world, if you break something, it gets less worth. But in the kingdom, unless you are broken, you are worthless. But if you are broken, you are worth. Because now God can put it back together again. He can recreate it into his image. And today we're going to be looking at the last in a sermon series about Acts 2. We began three weeks ago about they were all together in one place. Acts 2 verse 1. And I, I, I said it was like a little seed. You, you know, there's not much to go on there. They were all together in one place. Not much said what was going on. But, the time, but by the time we get to the end of the chapter... Now we see the fruit of that tree. And that's what we're going to study today. The fruit of the tree, of the work of the Holy Spirit that began in Acts 2, verse 1. It progresses with the falling of the Holy Spirit. And as I preached three weeks ago, uh, the main role of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament is to break through barriers. Notice the word break. Again, these barriers can either be inside the church or outside the church. You know, in the book of Acts, sometimes the barriers were inside the church, inside people's hearts. Sometimes the barriers are external, out there, beyond these doors. But sometimes God has to break down. Again, Ellen White says, unless you are broken, you are worthless. So God had to break through, first of all, the barriers of the apostles and their hearts. Then they could go outside and preach the message. What is the message? Jesus is Lord. He's the risen Lord. He's been raised. He, you know, you crucified him, you murdered him. But now he's been raised to heaven above. And God wants to become Lord of your life. But in order for God to become Lord of your life, he has to break through your life, and you have to become broken because now you're going to be a new creation. And in order to make that new creation, God is going to have to do some breaking, unfortunately. Hmm? And being broken is not a fun process. But afterwards, as we'll see, it will generate the wonderful fruit of righteousness. So I... Um, you have the sermon uh, notes uh, that I gave out here. This is part of a booklet that I'm uh, producing uh, called Transforming Adventist Mission. It's emphasis on conversion. And one of those, la and, and one of those lessons is called The First Dot Com Church. And in my study about how God grows the church, and I'll boil it down to one sentence. How does God grow the church? God grows the church by growing people. And then you get to the question, well, how does God grow people? God grows people through three dynamics that should be balanced in the life of the individual and the church. So this is a, uh, a diagram that I made up. All three words begin with C-O-M. That's where you get the dot-com church. 
dot com this, dot com that. Well, this was dot com back in Acts 2 in 31 AD. So there are three components here, communion, community, and commission, all empowered by the Holy Spirit. First of all, there's community. In order to grow as a Christian, you need to be connected with God. You need to have unity with God. Amen? And we do that basically, as we'll see in the preceding verse, in the verses that will follow, through Bible study. That is the main way that God generates unity with Him, and also through prayer. There's other things, like we're going to help go on a discipleship walk in the park. Being out in nature can bring about this unity. Uh, fasting. There are many spiritual disciplines uh, that can generate unity with God. Meditating on His Word, Scripture memorization, etc. So that's the first component, unity with God. The second component is the first component is union with God. The second component is community, union with one another. The first is the vertical dimension. The second is the horizontal. Jesus says, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if you love one another. And by the way, God is the one who gives you that love. You know, as someone one time said to me, or I, I've heard you know, I love God. It's his kids I can't stand. Um, you are not going to grow far in the Christian life unless you come into unity with the people he wants you to come in contact with. The, the a third dimension is commission. You also have to have some type of a sharing experience with others. In fact, as this is set up, as we'll see in the book of Acts, if there's communion with God, if there's community with one another, it will generate the mission automatically. Amen? Amen. It will generate it. And so we're going to see how these three components are alive and well in Acts 2. And Acts 2 is the fruit of of the seed that we saw in Acts 2, verse 1. And we're so what we're going to do is um, this is a community or commission. Okay? Because everything that the church does is going to be one of those three things. So let's see what, let's begin. Acts 2, 42, 47. The believers, very important, 